welcome once again the topic now we are going to see is tubeless anesthesia for laryngeal and tracheal surgeries so to start with what is the rational behind or what is the desire what is the uh, important uh, thing which is responsible for such a topic as so as far as anesthesiologists are concerned it's always our aim is to secure the airway by endotracheal tube or laryngeal mass airway or by any latest gadgets but the topic what it says is tubeless field anesthesia it is very unique and it's contrary to what anesthesiologists commonly think that is tubeless field anesthesia the one thing which paved way for this tubeless field anesthesia is purely surgical desire so it is a surgical desire for tubeless field in patients with acute or chronic laryngeal or tracheal pathology can be a very daunting prospect for anesthesiologists who are unfamiliar with these type of techniques so before we go into the topic what is the need for any type of laryngeal or tracheal or microlaryngeal surgeries the requirements includes an unobstructed view of larynx immobility of vocal cord complete control of airway and ventilation and last one is requires a technique that minimizes combustion This, because we all know nowadays most of the microlaryngeal surgeries are done with the help of laser so anything which reduces combustion is very important necessary requirement for any microlaryngeal surgery so it's usually not a problem if we get a cases like this you can see the lesions are mostly in the anterior part of the larynx as we all know tube always occupies the posterior part of the glottis any anterior lesions are not going to produce any difficulty for surgeons tube but any posterior glottic lesions the tube is going to hit the view so the surgeon is not going to get any unobstructed view like this if you get a pathology of the larynx like this a tumor which is obscuring the entire larynx or glottic opening or a tumor which is involving the posterior third of the glottis where the endotracheal tube commonly lies so in such situations what we are going to do is we are going to have a difficulty so the tube is going to hinder the surgeons the obstruction for the view for the surgeon is going to be there so it will be a problem so we are supposed to do in such a way that surgeons get an unobstructed view of the glottic opening so before moving into the topic per se first let us see what are the devices the surgeons use for this type of microlaryngeal surgery the most important device is suspension laryngoscope this is the picture of a suspension laryngoscope this you can see this consists of a handle and a round uh, structure you can see here and there is a connection for either a light source or for the oxygen supplementation you can see the suspension laryngoscope why it is called a suspension laryngoscope is because we are after introduction into the patient's mouth it is going to suspend over the chest of the patient with the rigid equipments so this is going to produce lot of hemodynamic instability which needs to be managed very well by the anesthesiologist now we are not going into this topic actually we are going to discuss pertaining to the airway so suspension laryngoscope after int introduction into the patient's mouth after it is being suspended you can see a clear cut view of the glottic here you can see the glottic opening is clearly visualized without any hindrance so the light source is going through the side port and oxygen supplementation is also given through the side port this is how a field should be but this cannot be done in all patients as we get a wide variety of uh, spectrum of patients with uh, multiple airway obstructions and airway compromise so it is not possible in all cases to have a common anesthesia plan so this is uh, about suspension laryngoscope which helps us in get a very wide and excellent laryngeal exposure and it allows the surgeons to have a diagnostic examination biopsy and operation on surgical structures in the larynx and pharynx with very minimal distortion of the areas of surgical interest so our aim is also to also to support the surgeon in such a way that there is no much hindrance while giving or administering anesthesia in a safe manner so this is about microlaryngeal surgery first there will be systemic systematic endoscopy of larynx and pharynx followed by progression from handheld examination to a suspension laryngoscope followed by microlaryngoscopic biopsy or microlaryngeal surgery or laser assisted surgery will take place but the most important concerns in this type of surgery for us is sharing of patient's airway we are going to the anesthesiologists are going to share the patient's airway with the surgeons so in case of any difficulties or any uh, mishaps is going to happen we are not going to get any immediate access to the airway already it's going to be a difficult airway and it is going to produce much damage so the moment 
some airway related complications like extubations or uh, laryngospasm or bronchospasm is going to happen. The time which is available for us or the time we are going to reach the patient's airway is going to be very, very high. So, in that case, we might land up in problem. 